Hey guys, welcome back to the Sullivan family. Right, today, me and Erin are on a little road trip, aren't we Erin? Because Erin's got a ENT appointment about her hearing and her grommets over at Ragmore. So it is um, nine o'clock, the kids have gone to school. We've got an appointment at half past 10. So fingers crossed we can find a car parking space because they're always a bit of a nightmare at Ragmore. Um, but yeah, hopefully, we know her grommets didn't um, didn't work. One of them fell out, and the last time we went, she had an ear infection in the other ear, um, so they couldn't see whether that had worked or not. But the glue ears come back in the other ear, um, so we just don't really know what's going on with her hearing at the moment. Um, it's not it's not all that great. So hopefully we'll get some answers today. Hi, Erin. Yeah, yeah. So we go for a little drive to the hospital. Good. Right. So see you later. Okay, so we have uh, we've got to Ragmore. Parking is just awful as per. It takes us longer to it would take me longer to get here than I thought it was gonna. So that leaves you you need to leave about 20 minutes for just driving around the car park trying to find a car parking space. It's just always a nightmare. Four years we've been coming here now and it's still a nightmare. Um so I've kind of abandoned my car a little bit where there isn't actually a space but fingers crossed we'll be all right hopefully so we've only got a few minutes to our appointment so we're going to go and go in now okay bye now which way this way what's that one where are we going Let's go this way what's that one yeah we can see you okay so that is us done at the hospital so Erin's been, obviously they've both, both twins have been under um, a paediatrician since they were born because they were premature. Um, so they've had lots and lots and lots of hospital trips for numerous things all along the way. Um, so Erin and, well they both had a slight heart murmur. Um, both of them have, have grown, they've grown out of them. Erin um, had um, extra fluid on her brain um, but luckily that that um, <clears throat> that went as well. Um, so they've they've grown out of most things. We've been really really lucky with them. They've um... <laughs> but one thing that has stuck with Erin is her problems with her hearing. Um, so she first went under the ENT here at Ragmore about a year ago now, um, and obviously he put her forward for grommets. Um, she failed both of our hearing tests we failed one and then went back again i get it in a second we went back again and she failed the next one so he put her forward for grommets which she had fitted in august unfortunately one of them fell out which we knew when we came back and saw the consultant in i think november time and at the time she had an ear infection in the other ear so there wasn't much they could do well anyway so we've gone back today um and she has uh the glue ear is back in both ears um Obviously, one of the grommets is out. Um, the other one isn't doing what it should be doing. So she also has a problem with her tonsils as well because they're very enlarged and she doesn't sleep well at all. It, it, it wakes her up all night long. Um, we had the same problem with Eva. She had sleep apnea because her tonsils were very large. Um, she ended up having her tonsils and adenoids out when she was about six. Um, because Erin is so tiny, the consultant she's seen another consultant today as well um because she's so tiny they're quite reluctant to take her tonsils out the size she is she only weighs 14 kilos she's going to be four next week um so she's quite young to have it done and she's also very tiny to have it done and although it's a straightforward operation 
it's it still comes with risks of bleeding and everything and you know we at the moment um she's she's okay she she does wake up a lot during the night it does disturb her sleep but i would rather her wait and get that little bit bigger and be more able to cope with another operation so basically what they want to do is do tonsils adenoids and grommets all at the same time they don't really want to put her under anesthetic again uh, for more grommet surgery on its own so quickly after having grommet surgery so for now what they've suggested is giving her some hearing aids to help her with her hearing because obviously she is delayed in her speech and she's she's still struggling to hear and it, she is getting very frustrated um, she can she's not too bad if it's one-to-one -one or but we, we are finding with her hearing she's she's just not picking things up um, she gets very frustrated and if it's very busy which it is in our house anyway she 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 really struggles she gets quite angry and um, it is having an effect now on her speech although her speech is you know we've really been working on it they've been working on it in nursery um, she's doing really well but there's a lot of things she doesn't pronounce right and she just needs a bit of help so they have um, referred her to Elgin which is good because it's closer for us um, to the audiology there so thank you so we can get some thank you thank you so we can get her some little hearing aids um hang on a second how long for i'll give you a snack in a sec um how long she'll need them for i don't know uh sometimes children do grow out of glue ear whether or not it's got any relation to um some of the antibiotics she had when she was tiny i don't know uh we don't know until they kind of get the glue ear cleared up they can't tell if there's any other underlying issues so we just we just don't know it could be that the glue ear clears up and we find there's other problems but for now um i'm pleased that we've made some progress to be honest i'm pleased that we've got a little bit further forward for her because it is frustrating it's frustrating for us to see her struggling um and it's obviously frustrating for her to be struggling so yeah we're quite happy aren't we you were really good for the doctor weren't you yeah you were she's always so good for the doctor she, they're so used to seeing the doctors all the time um they're brilliant for them so we're pleased, don't we? We're going to go home and see Daddy now. Yeah? I want more snacks. She wants more snacks, and then we're going to go home and see Daddy. So, um, yeah, it's good news. Now for the long drive home. Okay. Okay, so we are home, finally. Journey back wasn't too bad. Not, it's not a bad journey, though. It's just we've done it a lot over the years, and um, it's only a, a, a one-way, you know, a, not a dual carriageway, so... Um, if you get stuck behind anything it can take some time anyway we're home it's been quite a productive morning erin is obviously fast asleep so i'm gonna have to wake her up and take her in in a minute um for any of you that don't know um erin and leah were 10 weeks premature so um that is why we've been to countless i mean they're four next week and we've been to countless um, hospital appointments over the years with them um, they're still under their paediatrician as well um, in Elgin um, so we go to see him every six months for a review as well so it's been a bit of a checklist over the years they they tick things off as they go along obviously um, Erin has always been a little bit more of a worry uh, she had sepsis when she was only a week old she was only um, two pound six when she was born um so she was very tiny anyway and then when she was a week old she got sepsis and uh we were only given a 50 percent chance of her making it through i think at her lowest point she was about 810 grams um because she couldn't feed because of the uh, antibiotics so we always knew there would be there could be ongoing issues and, and as far as we're concerned we're we're so lucky that she's she's come out of it with you know barely anything she's she's passed everything she's they're amazing they really are amazing they've um you know we didn't know what to expect all four years ago we just wanted them to to make it through that was that was our only our only wish really was that you know it was such a shock that they were born so early um it was a really difficult thing to deal with we just wanted them to 
to make it through and get them home. That was all we could think of at the time. So you kind of don't prepare yourself for all, all of the things that are going to happen in the future. You just, you just get through what you're doing. Um, and I think it's been a little bit like that over the last four years. We just, we just cross each hurdle when we come to it. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased we've made some progress. I'm, I'm, I think hearing aids will really help her. Um, and obviously she'll be on a waiting list now for her tonsils and uh, probably another grommet operation, but they'll do it all at the same time. So um, yeah, I think we've made some good progress today. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, just a little bit more insight into um, just a small part of our lives really. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. See you soon.